Welcome back to the channel. In last video, we announced the Diablo. In this video, I want to give you a really detailed look at it. And specifically, I want to talk about the value of this. So this is the VT Roadster Diablo. Other than I think the SV, I think this is the most desirable spec they ever did in the Diablo. It's got the convertible roof that you can remove and latch back on here. Right now, the cheapest one of these that's listed for sale online is $325,000. That's just insane. The value of these has just gone up through the roof. I paid $118,000 for this. That's less than half the cost, but that comes with plenty of caveats. You get what you pay for. There is plenty of little issues and things that we're gonna have to do to this vehicle. It essentially needs a complete cosmetic restore. And then on top of that, it needs plenty of mechanical work. So what I wanna do now is just go over the whole car, look at it very up close and in detail, talk about all of the little issues it has, and at least the current plans that we have for what we're gonna do to address those. Real quick, I know what you guys are thinking though. You're saying, Patrick, you bought this car from Ed Bully and he is the shrewdest of all the shrewd negotiators to have ever shrewded on this planet Earth. How did you get such a good deal on this? Don't worry, Ed got his profit. Ed always gets his profit. He paid practically nothing for this vehicle. He paid $78,000 for this, unbelievable. What he did for me was very similar to what he did for Hoovy on his Murcielago. He just said, hey, I've got this car. I got it for a great deal. I'm gonna film some videos with it. I'm gonna be able to kind of restore it and I'm gonna be able to flip it for a profit. If you wanna take this opportunity from me, I'm gonna want some of that profit up front from you. So he charged me that 40 grand. He's like, hey, if you really do want this, I'm not saying you have to buy it, but if you want it, you're gonna have to pay 118 grand. So I fell for it. This is the second time that I have given Ed Bully an asking price for a vehicle. He's just too shrewd. What can I say? There's nothing you can do. Anyways, now that we've got that finished with, let's go ahead and start on the outside of the vehicle. Let's talk about the paint. So right now, especially on camera, it honestly doesn't look bad at all. It's the silver color. They did a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. Like you can see, they painted over some of the rubber molding here. There's some issues with that up here. And you can see the red, original red color underneath. Here's a big, part where it's chipped off. So they did an okay job, but just not a super car quality level of paint. So I wanna redo it, I wanna do it right. Alex is the paint expert, he knows what we need to do to get it done. So I think we're gonna do that. Color wise, I'm not really certain. I definitely wanna do a Lamborghini color, probably also a Diablo color. Should we look at some purples or? Yes, they've got the 30th anniversary purple that looks amazing on the Diablo. It's also quite rare. I think it would look so good. They've got a gold that Ed Bullion was recommending I do, as well as a, a blue that I really like. So let me know what you guys think of the paint down below. We're gonna be redoing it. It's gonna look so good. Next up, let's look at the carbon. It's in rough shape. I believe this was installed back in like 99. You can see it's just all cracked and weathered just from the UV damage. So we can either restore this or we can replace it. We'll have to figure out just how much work it is. I know how to restore the carbon. It's just a question of how much effort is it worth going into to save it versus should we just get new stuff if it's available. As you can see, there is carbon everywhere, all over this car. The mirrors, even on the windshield wiper blades, you've got some right there. This mirror on the interior, you got the door sill, the doors itself, got this little end cap here, the control panel, center console back here, the roof, the bucket seats, those are carbon too. So there is a lot of work to be done there. We could paint it, that would hide any of the damage. We can replace it or we can restore it. We'll have to figure that out. Also on the outside, something that I know nothing about the badges, these are very just weathered, worn. A lot of the gold is just faded and gone. It's just mostly kind of silver. I think especially this one just looks completely silver. All the gold's gone. And then I think it's an enamel, the black background. That's kind of gone weathered as well. So hopefully we can restore these badges, make those look pretty nice. Now the last thing I want to talk about on the exterior would be the wheel. So currently, has these are kinesis three two or three piece wheels you can see all the bolts all the way around 
Ed, when he sold this to me, he said he really liked these wheels. They're period correct. And uh, he said Kinesis used to have a good reputation. Now, apparently, they don't. So these are kind of like, if I wanted to leave these, that would totally be fine. But I think it would be really cool to put some OEM Diablo wheels. They're just so unique. There's so many weird Diablo wheel options that I could go with that I think it would be a shame not to do it. So let me know what you guys think. What are some of the, your favorite Diablo wheels? I think I would want to get some that were put on the VT Roadster just to keep it uh, kind of true to its original form. So let me know if you got any suggestions for those. Okay, now if you thought the outside was bad, let's move right along into the interior. So you'll notice the interior, every kind of square inch of it is covered in this brown Alcantara. I think it doesn't look terrible. Uh, it does kind of go with the black and silver color scheme of this car, but you'll notice it's extremely worn and faded. You'll see it's falling apart here. This is aftermarket, so it wasn't done to a super high level of standard. You can see it's like all disconnected here, just falling apart. And check this out. I don't know if you can do this in all <laughs> Diablos. You can just take the airbag panel off kind of scary this thing's about to explode in my face and you'll notice it's kind of hard to tell you guys might think it's just the lighting this is extremely sun faded even if I put my hand here to shade it you'll notice this is very light right here it's supposed to be this dark dark chocolatey brown color this is very sun faded we absolutely have to do something here i think we're just going to completely reupholster the interior you can see the steering wheel this is where it's especially bad a little crusty yeah this is just gross greasy frayed gross that's enough on the interior. Let's talk mechanics. Fortunately, the engine so far seems to be very solid. It starts right up, it revs great, it sounds amazing. We've got this massive, just Lamborghini V12, obviously what this car is iconic for. We've got their firing order printed out here on this big carbon piece. It's just like a work of art underneath here, you love it. We've even got our Italian, check this out, this is a $40,000 option. Just kidding, it's a piece of wood and the gas struts are just bad. They need to be replaced, they're just done. Same on the doors. It's warm out now, so they're a little bit more effective, but uh, earlier when it was colder in the year, these would just fall down. It's just like a guillotine waiting to kill you as you try to get into the car. So the engine is fine. That is very fortunate because that's like by far gotta be the most expensive and challenging thing to yeah. worry about if we had to. But the clutch, the front diff, and the drive line all need some work. What are we going to need to do in order to work on those? Oh man, I guess. So, with how this car is built, you don't have any room to pull the transmission out of the front. Okay. To change the clutch. Where is the transmission in a mid-engine vehicle? It's, right. it's up here, isn't it? Because normally the transmission is sitting right here in a front-engine vehicle, but it's probably just right back there. Yeah. You think? Oh, yeah, because this one's all-wheel drive, so. Yeah, so you can't just pull it out. We gotta pull the whole motor in order to get to the clutch. It's gonna be quite the challenge. And we can't just pull it out, of course not. We gotta take a bunch of like body panels off and stuff. Yeah, you gotta pull off the, all of this off the back because the trail it follows is right here. So okay, the so the engine comes straight out. So we gotta get rid of all of this. There's gonna be a ton of labor that goes into just that. That's what we're gonna be focusing on in the next video getting that clutch fixed. Over here, I've even got the drive line. I think what happened, the front differential went bad, and I think it must have just making been making some terrible noises and probably wasn't good and safe to keep doing that. So what they did, they went ahead and they just took the front drive line out. Now it's a rear wheel drive vehicle. I thought that was pretty funny. So this should be in good working order. We just need to put it back in. But before we do that, we need to pull the differential out Hopefully we can refurbish it so we can take the broken stuff, fix that, address that, replace the bearings or whatever it is, put it all back together, put it back in. That way we don't have to buy the whole differential assembly. That would be very expensive. Same exact theme with the clutch. I'm just gonna try to pull it out, address the issues that it has, don't fix the issues that it doesn't have, and go from there. Check this out. You have direct access to this bar that controls the throttle body. Do it, Alex. You can see it shifting over there and here as well. 
So that's what allows air to go into the intake and go into the cylinders, which controls the speed at which you go. Is that just connected directly with a wire yeah, to the to gas out. pedal? Nowadays, they're not connected directly, right? It's all like electronically controlled. Yeah, electric throttle body. But is this completely so manual back then? Drive by wire? Uh, I'm trying, oh, there it is, yeah, right there. You can see the line that goes into the cabin and to the gas pedal. That's pretty neat. Yeah, check this out. Alex is pushing down the gas pedal. And you can see it working. I love that. That's just like one of very many reasons why people love these older cars so much. You just don't have this character in vehicles anymore. It's all electronic. So that is an overview of the VT Roadster Diablo. I'm really excited to go ahead and get started on this whole process, but man, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Almost every aspect of the vehicle needs a little bit of TLC. So we're going to be getting straight into that, making videos all along the way. It should be a lot of fun. Overall, I think we're going to have to, obviously we're going to save a ton of money doing a lot of this stuff ourselves, um, but we do want to make sure that every single thing we do is good and proper. So we're going to be spending a lot of time and a lot of money, probably thirty dollars to $80,000 would be my guess on the budget. We're going to have to do to get this thing in tip top shape. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching this one. In the next video, we're going to worry about getting this running and driving. So that's going to be fixing the differential and the clutch. That's going to mean pulling out the motor. That's going to be so much work. Stay tuned for that one. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.